Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Welcome to r slash am I the butthole where OP's boyfriend demands that she give him $150,000. If you're watching this YouTube video and you're not behind a VPN, why? Honestly, in 2020, it's kind of silly to not be using a VPN. It protects your data from hackers and giant corporations, but if you ask me, that's not even the best part. When you're behind a VPN, you can ungeolock content on places like Netflix, Hulu, and even YouTube. Right now, there are thousands upon thousands of videos on Netflix that you can't watch that don't even show up on your search results because of your location. The only way to get past geolocked content is to either move to another country, which just means you have a different set of geolocks, or just get behind a VPN, which is a smart move because it protects your data anyways. I use ExpressVPN because, in my opinion, it's the best VPN service on the market. It's affordable, super easy to use, and as a YouTuber who uploads a video every single day, the most important part for me is that it doesn't slow down my internet connection at all. So if you want to protect your data and access geolocked content, then get three months free with expressvpn.com slash r slash. Am I the butthole for not paying for my siblings to go to university? I'm a 29-year-old female. My siblings are 19-year-old girl twins and a 17-year-old boy. About a year ago, I won a rather large amount of money. Since then, I paid off my mortgage, bought a rental home, paid for my parents to spend two months on holiday, paid off their mortgage, and bought each of my younger siblings a car, or in the case of my brother, a motorbike. I recently started planning my wedding to my partner of four years. Originally, we were going to have a very low budget wedding because neither of us were particularly wealthy and have little financial support from our parents. Hers are homophobic, and mine are just not well off enough to spend money on a wedding. But now we plan on having a slightly bigger wedding. However, during these discussions, my mother has been getting increasingly upset at the amount that I'm spending. The wedding will be about forty dollars to $50,000, including the honeymoon, and my partner is contributing $12,000. So it's not like we're spending an astronomical amount. And my mother has repeatedly suggested that we stick to our low-budget plans and give money to her from my siblings' college funds instead. These comments have been confusing me because she told me in the past that she got $20,000 when I was born to put towards my college fund from her parents and then $10,000 for each of my siblings. I got through college on scholarships and my part-time job, so presumably she has $50,000 already from my siblings' college fund. This came to a head about a week ago when she came with me to my wedding dress fitting and she saw the price tag of $3,000. She had a complete meltdown in the store about me wasting money and how she needed it, and I confronted her about the college fund. She admitted that she and my dad had spent the money on trips, alcohol, and gambling, and now there was almost nothing left. I said that if she wasted $50,000 meant for her kids' college funds, then why should I give her any more? At this point, she stormed out after throwing her glass of wine on my dress that cost 300 bucks to clean, and has since said that she's not coming to my wedding and will stop my dad and siblings from coming. Am I the butthole here? No, OP. Your mom is a selfish hypocrite who is treating you like a personal ATM. If you do decide to pay for your siblings' college, then absolutely do not give the money to your mom. Give it directly to your siblings. My hunch is, is that the real reason why she wants you to give her money is so that she can use it on herself. Am I the butthole for keeping a $300,000 prize to myself when I originally planned to share it with my boyfriend? I'm a 26-year-old girl, and my 27-year-old boyfriend is really into cars. He recently discovered a charity project where they fixed up an old Jaguar. It's worth around $300,000. You could buy a ticket for 50 bucks to enter and the money went towards a good cause. My boyfriend is broke at the moment, so I figured to go halves with the ticket. He didn't want to because then the car wouldn't be his completely. I wasn't too worried about it and didn't mention it again. I did, however, buy a ticket for myself. Well, I won, and as of August 1st, I will be the owner of the car. When my boyfriend found out, he was really excited until I told him that I was going to sell it and put half of it in my savings and invest half of it. He said I can't sell our car without consulting him. I told him it's my car and I can do whatever I want. He now claims it was all a big misunderstanding and apparently he wanted to go halves but hasn't gotten around to giving me the money yet. 
I call BS on it, but he keeps saying that we're a couple and we should make decisions together. Am I the butthole for going ahead with the plan to sell the car and keep the money for myself? Edit, I broke up with him. So, no, OP, you're not the butthole here. Your boyfriend set his own rules. He's the one who said that he didn't want to go halfsies because he didn't want to share the car. And now when you win it, he wants to share the car? No, that's BS. Your boyfriend's a hypocrite. Or an ex-boyfriend, I should say. And on another note, I really want to congratulate you for what I think is a super wise decision on what to do with the car. Keeping a 300k car would have been extremely wasteful. Selling the car and using the money to pay off your debts and invest is definitely the right call here. Also, tell your boyfriend that at car shows you're supposed to wave checkered flags, not red flags. Am I the butthole for not saying anything about the underwear? My 20-year-old daughter and her fiancé are currently staying with us. I love my daughter, but she's very difficult and I can't stand her fiancé. I gave them a deadline to move out because I can't take this anymore. They got into a massive fight the other day while my wife was out. I guess a pair of my wife's underwear got in with her laundry and she thought he was cheating. I think the fact that she immediately jumped to cheating shows how bad their relationship is. She was waving the underwear around and I recognized them because they had a floral print, but I just let this ridiculous fight go on. My wife came home about 30 minutes later and said they were hers. My wife asked if I didn't realize they were hers and I accidentally laughed. My daughter burst into tears and won't talk to me. Her fiancé said we're messed up and left the house, but my wife thought it was funny. I'm going to read this reply from JPEG down in the comments. <laughs> you might be a butthole, but I am living for it. My personal verdict is you're the butthole, but I'd like to invoke Douchebag vs. Frickboy, which states that in times of outlandish or otherwise infantile behavior, buttholery may, subject to scrutiny, be permitted. Am I the butthole for switching to regular milk to prove my lactose intolerant roommate keeps stealing from me? Me and two other guys share an apartment together and we split all the bills. The only thing we don't split costs on is groceries. Everyone's in charge of buying their own food and we don't touch whatever doesn't belong to us in the fridge. We put our names on everything so no one gets mixed up. This issue has been going on almost a year and I'm sick of it. One of my roommates, R, keeps stealing my food. I get home from work and containers with my leftovers are sometimes missing. They have my name written on it. Or my stuff gets finished too quickly. My gallon of milk for example. I buy almond milk because I like the taste, but it seems to be finished after a week even though I've only drank once or twice. I've confronted R about this lots of times and that's caused a lot of arguments. He outright denies it and tells me I'm crazy even though it's so obvious. My other roommate and I carpool together because we both work the same early morning shift around the same area so I know it's not him. It's always after we get back home and R's already left for work that I notice my food's gone. My roommate also had a similar problem, but not as often as I do. I'm guessing just because R doesn't like what he buys. The funny thing is, R buys a lot of food for himself and is even more stingy about his food. He will literally point out what's his when he comes back from grocery shopping and tell us not to touch it. Last week, my milk was nearly empty again and I got fed up. I went to the liquor store and bought regular dairy milk. I drank what was left of the almond milk and refilled the gallon with the one I bought. This was to catch and prove that R is the one stealing since he's lactose intolerant. The next day, Saturday, we get back from work and R is pissed. He yelled at me that he was stuck in the bathroom for 40 minutes with diarrhea because of my milk which he was using to make a shake. I only responded with, so then you're the one who's been stealing. He freaking exploded. Yeah, he admitted he was sometimes drinking my milk and eating my food, but he was more mad that I switched milks than the fact that he was caught. I told him I wouldn't have done it if he had just stopped taking my stuff from the fridge, or at least told the truth instead of trying to make it seem like I was making it up. My roommate backed me up and thought it was kind of funny he got payback for stealing from us. It's a little tense right now, and my roommate told me R is trying to convince him to agree to kick me out. Little does he know, we're both looking to move somewhere else together because we're sick of all his garbage. I told some buddies what happened and a few think I was the butthole for that. I feel like I'm not in the wrong here. He was taking my food and not even owning up to it and I wouldn't approve it. Does that make me the butthole? 
OP, this is crystal clear. You get zero out of five buttholes. It's your food that you bought, and this guy was overly protective of his food. He's a hypocrite and a thief, and he deserves to get that diarrhea. Am I the butthole for canceling my daughter's therapy because she has bad grades? My 14-year-old daughter has anxiety problems ever since she was little, but it wasn't severe. Three months ago, my daughter changed drastically. She stopped eating, talking to us or her friends, and her grades dropped. We were really concerned, and her teacher strongly suggested we take her to therapy, which we did, and she was diagnosed with severe depression and social anxiety, which was expected. The therapy sessions looked like they helped her. In the first month, she's already begun making progress and started talking to us and her friends again and is eating whatever her mother is cooking. We were really happy to see this, and every day she would get better and better. The thing is, her grades didn't. They're pretty terrible, and she ended up barely passing the year. This is what infuriated me and made me cancel her therapy sessions. I know to some it might sound terrible, but paying $120 per session and seeing no progress in her marks makes me feel like I'm seriously wasting my money now that she's returned back to normal. Not only that, but since she really enjoys going to therapy, I think telling her that she needs to get higher marks to continue her therapy sessions will motivate her to study harder and thus score better marks. My wife disagrees with my logic and we had a massive argument because of it, which ended up with her saying that she's going to pay for the therapy from her money, which hurt me since I see my money and her money as our money. My daughter is also really upset with me and was begging me to keep her therapy sessions, but I think I'm going to stick with this plan. Am I the butthole here? <laughs> OP, you're such the butthole here. The fact that you don't see it, it makes me be like, what can I even say to this guy to make him realize that he's a total douchebag? I think the best analogy I can make is, what if instead of getting rid of her mental therapy, you were getting rid of her physical therapy? And you're just like, well, if you're not going to get good grades, then you can't go to physical therapy. Back to the wheelchair for you, missy. Like, can you see how screwed up that is? I might even go so far as to say that what you're doing is straight up abusive. OP, I'm sorry for ragging on you so hard here because I really want you to get this message and listen. But yes, you are definitely the butthole. You get a full 5 out of 5 buttholes. Please put your daughter's health and safety over her freaking grades. Am I the butthole for telling my wife's friend that she's too old and ugly after she repeatedly asked my 19-year-old son to take off his shirt? He was getting uncomfortable. My family had a small get-together at my house. One of my wife's friends was over. She's unmarried, and I think she's 45 to 47 years old. We aren't too close to her since she lives pretty far away. She was over to our house, and she started complimenting my son. My son is 19. It starts off innocent, but as time went on, she crossed the line more and more. When we were out on the deck, she starts telling my son to take his shirt off. What's the point of going to the gym if no one will see it? My son is visibly uncomfortable and tries to shut her down. She repeatedly is asking and is getting more aggressive with it. I interject and I'm like, hey, Kathy, I think you're a bit too old and ugly for my son. This got her upset really quickly, and she excuses herself to the bathroom and starts crying. My wife goes to comfort her, and then later she leaves. At the end of it, my wife is super angry with me for saying that, that I should have said, hey, Kathy, it looks like you had too much to drink, or something else. I told my wife that Kathy works a corporate job, and she's had training on this, and that she knows better. And our son was uncomfortable. He's over 18 years old, but he doesn't know how to deal with an adult adult, let alone someone saying that in our house. I told my wife flat out that if I was to invite a guy friend and he was to ask to see our daughter in a bikini, my wife would have called the police. She says it's different. I told her that I was way kinder to Kathy than what I would have been had a guy said something like that to our daughter. And I told my wife that Kathy needs to apologize to my son before she can ever come into our house again. Overall, I think it was fair. If Kathy just said it once and I said that, I think I would be the butthole. But the fact that she kept repeating it, that's why I said it. And I wanted her to get the message that yes, I am upset. That's why I included the ugly part. OP, I'm really glad that you made the analogy of a male friend saying this to your daughter. Because I was thinking the exact same thing when I was reading this story. Young men have just as much of a right to say no and set boundaries as do young women. What your wife's friend did was incredibly rude and disrespectful. 
Now, I will admit that, yeah, you probably could have handled the situation more delicately, so for that, I will agree with your wife and give you like 0.5 out of 5 buttholes, but that doesn't mean you are wrong at all in this scenario. I'm giving Kathy 3 out of 5 buttholes because she way crossed the line. Am I the butthole for kissing my friend's brother without his consent during Truth or Dare? <laughs> OP, I don't even need to read this story, and I can already tell that you're the butthole here. Yesterday, I was supposed to spend the night at my friend's house with some of my classmates, and we were playing Truth or Dare. There really is no reason for us to choose Truth, since we already know a lot about each other, so we mostly just went with Dares. It's pretty fun, and we had some weird challenges. I was sitting next to my friend's brother, and when it was my turn, a classmate challenged me to kiss him. His sister immediately told my friend to change the Dare, and so she did. To be clear, her brother didn't say anything when he heard the dare and just laughed, so he definitely looked like he was okay with it, right? Well, wrong, because after I kissed him, he told me what the F am I doing and looked like he was really grossed out by it. I was honestly a bit offended and asked him why is he so grossed out by me kissing him. I'm actually a pretty okay looking girl and even if I wasn't, there was no reason for him to act like this. He ended up leaving the game, and my friend told me that what I did was wrong on so many levels and to get out of her house. My other classmates didn't say anything, so I think they were on my side, but didn't want to participate in this argument. I'll ask when they go back home. Anyways, I did end up leaving. Do you guys think I'm the butthole here? OP, for real. Come on now, you know you're the butthole here. I mean, it's not rocket science. Get consent before you perform sexual acts on someone else. It doesn't matter if it was truth or dare, it doesn't matter if you're a pretty good looking girl. You still need to get consent first. Also, if the situations were reversed and a guy did this to you when you didn't want to kiss him, I bet you'd be flipping out right now. So yeah OP, I'm giving you 3.5 out of 5 buttholes. Wait, <laughs> so I'm a YouTuber and I spend all my time in the basement, so I never go outside anyways, and I kind of forgot that there's a, a global pandemic going on for a second. So I think that kissing someone on the mouth without their consent is going to make this go up at least a full extra point. So sorry OP, you're getting bumped up to 4.5 out of 5 buttholes on this one. That was r slash am I the butthole and if you like this content then check out my Patreon where I publish extra videos. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new reddit videos every single day.